Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today I am going to be telling you guys the difference between ballet in America versus Europe. So if you don't know, I'm a professional ballet dancer and I have now worked in both America and Europe. I've literally just come home from America. I was working in a ballet company there in New Jersey and then I've also worked in a ballet company in Romania. I'm from the UK so I also have knowledge of what ballet is like in Europe. Before we start this video I just want to say this is from my personal experience and my opinions. I think it's really interesting how ballet can be so different in different countries. I find the biggest difference is between America and Europe, which is why I think it's the most interesting to like compare the two. But let's just get straight into it. Number one, the ballet terms are different. Okay, so I kind of had a little bit of a hard time when I first went to America and started dancing there because some of the names for steps, they were called different things there. For example, if you're a ballet dancer, you'll know what I'm on about, but if not, don't worry. A lame duck. That probably sounds so weird if you're not a ballet dancer. <laughs> yeah, so when I trained in Central, like I've just trained in a step as a lame duck. In America, it was just called a step over. Same thing with a grand jeté. So a grand jeté is that big jump where you split the legs in the air. In America, they called it a soda shot. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> I remember the first time I was like, um, I don't know what that is. So I found that very interesting. I'm not really sure why, because the ballet terminology is French. So I would have thought it would all be the same, but I, maybe I just think over the years in America, they've just developed it over time, I guess, and like altered the words maybe. So if you're training in ballet in Europe, there are schools that allow you to graduate with a degree. So it's very established established as a trusted course for university, ballet is one of them. The degree that I graduated with is BA Honours in Dance and Professional Performance. I trained at Central School of Ballet for any dancers who may know. It's absolutely amazing that we can go to ballet school and graduate with a degree. In America, you can only get a diploma. In America, I would definitely say you train more turns and jumps. Like when I was working in my American company, we did a lot of turns which was really good to be honest because it made you do it like really fast turns. It's really good to train that. It was difficult at times, but I think it's so good to do. In America, I would say they like to do more tricks, more turns, bigger jump, more beats, things like that. In Europe, I feel like it's more quality and how you dance, how you do the movements over quantity. That's just my personal view. If you put side by side an American principal dancer by the side of, for example, a British ballet dancer, you can definitely see the differences. I mean, they're both just as amazing in their own ways, but yeah, I find that so interesting. It's really cool. So in America, there are a load of small ballet companies dotted all over America, like in each state. In Europe, I would say there are more bigger companies and then just a few small ones. So in America, there are less big ones like ABT, Miami City Ballet, New York City Ballet and more small ones. In Europe, definitely at least for the UK, there are bigger companies. There's Royal EMB, Birmingham Royal Ballet, Northern Ballet, Scottish Ballet. There's probably like two smaller ones. If that, I can imagine it would be the same for or other countries. In Romania, they were all middle-sized companies, so pretty decent companies, pretty much in each city. If you're not American and you want to dance in America, it is really difficult to do that. I think I mentioned on a couple of previous videos of like how I got my visa and stuff, but it's really difficult and it's such a lengthy process. So it's really difficult for a non-American to go and work in a ballet company in America, whereas an American 
American coming to Europe, it is not as difficult. I think there are more international dancers in Europe and in America, in the ballet companies, it's mostly American dancers. I was specifically lucky that my company were able to help with the visas and so we did have international dancers in America, but most of the others just couldn't do it. So I think that's quite cool in Europe how there's so many dancers from different nationalities in one company. Each country has their own style. They all bring their own qualities into the company and I feel like that's really beneficial rather than all the dancers having the exact same style. So every single day you do a ballet class in a company to warm up for rehearsals and when I was dancing in America versus Romania the classes were so different. In Romania we would always do fondue in the center. We hardly did it in America. In Romania, sometimes we wouldn't get to Grand Allegro, whereas in America, we did it every single day. And in America, there would always be a fast turning combination. Whereas in Romania, there would sometimes just be like a slow pirouette from the corner. So that's really interesting. And also I feel like a company in Europe, you get more corrections that you still get corrected even when you're working. In America you do still get corrections but I feel like it's not as much. There are probably dancers in America that get corrections all the time so that's just a personal experience one. I heard a dancer talk about this and they said it the other way around but I personally think that companies perform more classical ballets in Europe than in America. What I mean by that is Swan Lake, Romeo and Juliet, Don Quixote, Sleeping Beauty, La Bayadere, all of these old classics. I feel like more companies do that in Europe versus America where I think that sort of the neoclassical is more done in America. I mean, Germany, for example, they are doing a lot of neoclassical and contemporary, but I'd say overall, that's the feeling that I get. Don't get me wrong, America do obviously do some of the classics as well. It's a difficult one, that one, because Royal Ballet, they now do a lot of neoclassical as well as EMB, but definitely in places like Romania, like where I work, there was pretty much no neoclassical. We just did one ballet in Ishiana, which was more contemporary ballet, but there was still a lot of classical steps in it. I feel like there's a completely different energy from the audiences in America versus Europe. From my personal experience, the audiences in America were more reserved. That's just my experience of it. I feel like in Europe, ballet is appreciated and it's in their culture with the beautiful theatres, the history behind it, as well as like operas as well. When they go to a ballet, they appreciate it so much. And again, I'm not saying that Americans don't appreciate ballet, but from what I've read up, ballet is very respected in a lot of countries in Europe. Point shoes are so much more expensive. In America than in Europe. So the point shoes I wear, I buy them for £65 here. In America, they're like $110. £65 to dollars is $78 right now. So yeah, they are a lot more expensive. I'm not sure why, but it's not just point shoes. It's like leotards and just anything in general, but the salaries are higher, so it makes sense. And that leads me on to my next point. In general, salaries are higher in America versus Europe. So now this is contradictory to what I just said, because I said that in general, salaries are higher in America. And that is the case for most industries. However, from my experience in the ballet industry, the salary is higher in Europe compared to the cost of living, apart from the big companies in America, which have higher salaries. And lastly, the ballet companies in Europe are government funded. So the companies receive money from the government to help pay the dancers and for other costs. Whereas in America, it's all self-funded. The government doesn't give any money, which makes sense why the salary wouldn't be higher. In Europe, or at least the company that I worked in, the government is helping give the company money 
which then obviously goes to the dancers. Whereas in the US, if they're getting no help, then the dancers are getting paid all from money that is made from ticket sales and sponsorships. So yeah, that's my little differences between dancing in America and in Europe. I hope you found that interesting. Comment any thoughts you have. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll be seeing me very soon in the next one. Bye.